This is a big room. <laughs> so Dave was way, one of way the bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah, I connected with Dave seven years ago, right before this yeah. started. So he's seen it uh, grow from a baby into what are we now? A teenager, maybe? <laughs> maybe we're a toddler. A toddler, yeah. We've got we've got more to go. This is really amazing. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, thank you. I, I yeah, we met when you were just barely getting it started, so it's really neat to see this. Cool. Yeah. Oh. yeah, Dave was at Facebook, I think, at the time. Yeah. And um, I had told him, I'm like trying to find anybody interested in mindfulness <laughs> <laughs> who, is, who also is in the technology world. So it was so hard to find at the time. So like searching around and they're like, there's this guy named Dave who's helped creating the Facebook platform and <laughs> you got to get a hold of him. I'm like, really? Somebody at Facebook? <laughs> uh, back when it was like everyone was shy to talk about it and Dave was like a good friend and connected me to other people and was like, no, we really need to have this conversation. Um, so I feel very fortunate that there were people like yourself and Leah and Dustin and others who were like supportive. Yeah, uh, good to be back. Because I wanted to bring the tech community in. Uh, so Dave and I are going to talk about a number of uh, different things today, but we're first going to start ta talking about uh, entrepreneurship. Um, because even though he's from Montana and has deep Montana roots, uh, you also worked at Apple. You were early at Facebook and you got to see the rise of Facebook. You started Path. So you've seen both things take off uh, in crazy ways <laughs> and you've yeah. also things not take off in the same crazy ways. Um, so I'd just love to get your insights about that and then also talk about um, kind of how you see the, these new companies that are emerging that are trying to use technology for a greater purpose. And I think what we've seen in the past uh, 10 years, nothing against a lot of these great companies, but they, they, were, they were not really trying to solve a social issue or a problem. They were just trying to entertain us. And I feel like there's this new wave of entrepreneurs, which I'd put you in there, which is trying to use technology to actually help reduce human suffering. And I think that's an important piece to talk about. Mm. Uh, so we'll get to that. But before, I would love for you to talk a little bit about uh, the lessons both in when something exceeds beyond its wildest dreams, which I'm guessing Facebook, <laughs> I would say, has and the challenges of that or the experience of that. And then also when it doesn't. And I know when we were talking before, you had said actually when your last company ended up getting sold, that's when you kind of started hanging out with friends again and also starting your meditation practice again. Yeah, so I was wondering if you could speak to a little bit of, about um, some of your lessons being on both sides of that experience of like uh, crazy, um, you know, things going off on a crazy way as Facebook did and then other things where you end up selling it and, and yeah. it turning out differently than you thought. Wow, that's a huge question. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think that, um, I don't know, do you want me to start with Facebook start with or with it, path? Sure. Start with Facebook, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Facebook experience was like a really interesting one because, you know, it, it went like way better than we ever could have imagined. Um, and going through, you know, I, I got there when we had about five million users um, and left when we had around a billion. And, you know, going from just a few, you know, 50 people in a room to thousands of people serving a billion people um, at a very rapid pace, you know, like three years um, was, pretty intense, um, all things considered. I, I, don't, I think I'm still not recovered. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know what there is to say about it other than that um, that level of energy is uh, pretty intense and <laughs> a, a, a very fast teacher. And I think that you know, it can be a, a false teacher in a way because um, it's easy to think that uh, that amount of uh, velocity and energy is going to happen anytime you work on something. Um, right. You know, I think if you were to talk to anybody that came out the other side of Facebook, I think they, whatever they're doing next, you know, it's it's a um, it's easy to misunderstand what the lessons were um, in application to the next thing. Uh, right. Right. And I, I think that that's uh, I don't know if that's helpful. Did you learn any particular lessons though, seeing that seeing that crazy rise in terms of just who you are as a person and what's important to you and Yeah. I think it's pretty easy to get extremely lost in ego, um, and this is like a pretty hard thing to admit, I guess, but like, you know, we were all in our 20s, um, didn't know what we were doing in, in a lot of respects, um, and suddenly had the world at the doorstep, and, you know, I think it's easy to let your ego get out in front of, um, out in front of you, and 
to be sort of leading with too much ego in a way. Yeah, and I, I mean, if you go back, I think, and look at that era in Facebook, you saw a lot of sort of uh, public and press reaction against that sort of hubris um, that I think uh, I certainly was, um, fell victim to that, uh, certainly. And I think a, a big reason I came out of Facebook and went into trying to start Path with like a much more intentional kind of uh, mission was because I felt like I, I had gotten so lost in the ego of, of, of serving, you know, this many people and how lucky are we and, you know, right. all, all that kind of, you know, humble. Because if you're a central stuff. person at Facebook back then, you were, you were the man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every, the yeah. media wants you, people want you, VCs yeah. want you, like everybody wants you. And so that has its own challenges. Yeah. Mind. And I think it's like, you see this happen in cycles in Silicon Valley where people get sort of super lost in the ego, they go to all the conferences, they speak at all the things, they, you know, um, go on all the travel and, and, and forget about the company and, you know, forget about that, you know, at the end of the day, the reason that you're doing this is because the society is giving you permission to serve this, this important need, right? And it's not about you, right? Um, I actually remember towards the end, um, you know, thinking about, uh, there was a book that I read that the, the first line, I think it was the, um, purpose-driven life, and the first, the first line said it's not about you, you know, and uh -huh. I think that, like, that in the end, it, it's really easy to think when you're going through one of those experiences that it is, and it's right. not, you know, it's yeah. about service, and so, um, yeah. yeah, I think that's, that's the yeah. biggest lesson. And when you're in your 20s, I mean, that's a deep lesson to get in your 20s, yeah. um, because uh, I can imagine that being very challenging. Yeah. Yeah. And then with Path, so you started this new company, Path. Uh, Google offered $100 million for it, I think, after, what, a couple months? Yeah. Uh, it had a lot of hype, and it didn't yeah. necessarily live up to that hype. No. So you got different lessons. Would you, you speak briefly to, like, what some of the lessons were in, in creating something that, like, almost had hype from the beginning before it, it even yeah. knew what it wanted to be? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the hype came out of the ego uh, of, the, of the previous uh, experience. And... Um, you know, I started Path because I wanted to build a social network that was optimized for happiness. Um, my, my sense was, you know, and that's like a pretty broad, like, grandiose goal uh, in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, the, the idea behind it was to limit the number of connections that you could have to 150, because that's the optimal number of um, friendships that the human brain can maintain, like science has proven it. And even though we had spent all, this, all these years at Facebook trying to get people to, you know, be connected to more people, like the average at Facebook when I left was still 147. Um, and so... Are people you actually knew? Yeah, that was like your, the average number of friends on oh, Facebook oh, wow. um, at the time. And uh, uh, they were rapidly working to increase that number, but like, you know, it, it had sort of been proven that like this is the case. And so. I, uh, I wanted to build a network, mostly because I'm from Montana. I um, really love my family. Um, I miss my family. I realized I was like, driving back home from the South Bay to the city every night, and I never was using Facebook to communicate with my family. And I thought, wow, that's like, we've, we've worked on all this connectivity and connectedness, but yet this isn't a medium I'm using for my family. And so a big part of the mission of PATH was like, can you create a network that's just optimized for family? Um, I, I sort of used to use the metaphor that it was like the difference between the town square and your dinner table. Uh, and I think that like that was what we were trying to do. Um, and you know, the problem with that was that it just didn't grow as fast as uh, you know, the Silicon Valley venture cycle um, wants yeah. things to grow. And, um, you know, and I think we misexecuted in some ways. Um, you know, we, we, we obviously made a bunch of mistakes, um, as anybody does uh, in building companies, especially if it's your first time. And, um, you know, because of that, uh, we ended up having to sell the company. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I don't think we, you know, uh, it was a hard experience in a lot of ways. Um, and, uh, you know, we did end up with some, uh, with some success. Uh, it's still actually pretty big in Southeast Asia. If you guys want to go to Jakarta, uh, I can, <laughs> it's the place to I can make that happen for you. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know how a small town Montana guy ended up in Jakarta. Um, you know, uh, I used to joke, like, the bars are like Star Wars there. Um, you know, it's like every single type of person uh, you could possibly meet. And Path B 
became yeah huge. Yeah. And one of the one of actually the most interesting outcomes of Path becoming big in Southeast Asia, at least that might be relevant to this audience, is that we became really big in Bali, um, okay. and uh, and particularly in Abud, and like uh -huh. the, the yeah. sort of I would call like one of the most amazing spiritual centers in the world. Wow. You know, they call it the Island of the Gods. And oh. so I got to spend a lot of time in Bali. Oh, that's, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, got to meet a lot of really interesting folks uh, involved in, uh, in, in the uh, spiritual arts and spirituality okay. in, um, in Bali. And so that was like a really, actually I would say is one of the hugest pieces of uh, the path experience, which uh, I actually have never talked about. Uh -huh. um, so. <laughs> Um, and you know, that was, a, that, that was a big piece. Because you had said part of it, like, when, when things are going great, right, people usually don't, they forget about their meditation practice and other things, because it's yeah. like, why? Yeah. Um, can you say a little bit about your own kind of inner yeah. development and practice and how that played out as an entrepreneur? Yeah, so I grew up in Montana. Um, I had a, a, a brown belt in Aikido when I was a kid, and so I learned to meditate when I was pretty young, um, probably fifth grade, sixth grade. Um, and it was a big part of my upbringing. My father actually was very re rehearsed and world, I, I sort of would talk to him about any religion and he knew all of them. And so I, I would, you know, I learned a lot about it young, but I would say like when I came to Silicon Valley, things were so intense. I was at Apple and at Facebook, definitely lost the practice for like a long period of time. And I think like when I met you, it was like a flirting with like, you know, figuring out, I think it sort of the mindfulness maintained, but. Um, the practice itself had sort of fallen by the wayside. And um, halfway through the path experience, you know, uh, I think it was becoming pretty clear that this journey was going to be like a lot harder um, than we expected it to be. And I randomly, you know, we randomly ended up very large in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And so I started traveling there for work. And one of my best friends uh, was living in Bali in Changu. And I would go and visit my friend. Um, and then, you know, ended up sort of reconnecting with the um, with the, my meditation practice through the town of Abud oh, wow. in Bali, um, which I would have never expected. Um, but the the level of practice and the intentional sort of community that exists there and the kinds of people that you can get access to are sort of, I think, kind of constantly um, in that, you know, in, in that frame. And so that was like a huge piece of it because I was able to um, reconnect that way. And it, it kind of like, so it was almost half the path experience was like coming back to this wow. and I'd constantly go back to Bali and um, try to, try to uh, access that. And as things kind of came to an end last year, it, it became constant daily, you know, and I feel like now I'm kind of back, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> which is like really good, but cool. it took a long time. Yeah, got it. And could you talk a little bit about um, this kind of new uh, era of entrepreneurship? Uh, it feels like the previous era, at least that I could see, there was just a lot of effort to get eyeballs and clicks and not necessarily solve kind of social issues. I would love to hear what your yeah. vision is both to uh, address depression in America and the kind of other entrepreneurs who are now really looking at using technology for actually addressing real yeah. life issues to yeah. ease suffering versus just kind of more on an entertainment level? I think it's an amazing time. I mean, it feels like, and maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but we've been having you know, a conversation backstage and a lot of the conversations I'm having here, it feels like there's an emergence of a new kind of entrepreneurship that, um, you know, we've been talking about the idea of profit and purpose, it feels like, for a very long time, um, but it feels like you know, there's starting to be uh, an undercurrent of, of truly entrepreneurs that are starting to put, um, I would call it purpose before profit for the first time um, and doing it in mass. You know, I'm, I'm lucky, I, in addition to PATH, I have my, I have a venture capital fund. Called Slow Ventures. Yeah, it's called Slow that. Ventures, which is really named after, uh, <laughs> you know, all of this. And um, we're starting to see a lot of people create B corporations, right? Which enable you to define the DNA of a company um, at, at its inception to contain values which have to be fought for um, through the you know, perpetuity of the company uh, by somebody who sits on the board. That's their responsibility to take care of the values. Right. And so I think that people are starting to not only walk the walk, uh, you know, or not only talk the talk, but they're starting to walk the walk by defining their core values uh, around putting health outcomes first or putting, you know, this purpose first. Um, and um, as you were mentioning, one of, one of the things I'm working a lot on is um, uh, trying to find the cure uh, for depression. 
and um, I've been working on you know putting together a new company to to go after that goal and. Um, you know, do it in a way that puts that purpose, puts the outcome first. You know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem that affects one in four women, one in six men. It kills a million people a year, you know, more than war, more than, uh, you know, more than terrorism. It's, it's, it's one of the biggest problems in the world. If we don't do anything about it, it'll, it'll be the biggest burden on global and it, health. It seems like it's a, it's a problem in the world that technology hasn't solved in the yeah. sense of, like, you can have 5,000 friends on Facebook and be totally lonely and depressed. Yeah. yeah. It, it hasn't... It, yeah, we it, haven't found a way to minimize. Yeah, it. not only that, but the technology business has only just become. Even though we call, you know, in San Francisco we have t two industry, industries, right? We have tech and biotech, but technology has just barely started to cross into the biotech world, like the traditional tech movement. And so there's not just the actual technology itself, but there's practices for building companies, for uh, processes for how we go about, you know, whether it's lean startup or the open source movement. You know, a lot of these things haven't moved into um, the pharma world or the, the, the bio world in, in a meaningful way. And um, we're just now starting to be able to, I think, make real progress in genomics and like some of these things that um, I think is really, really exciting and um, bodes well for a future where you know the intersection of not just mindful, mindfulness and meditation, but the science and then the technology itself can all come together for the first time and start to address some of these like massive global problems around suffering that um, you know are like depression or like um, some of these other things and so it's really heartening to see you know I'm, I'm starting to see many entrepreneurs that were you know doing social networking last or doing uh, you know uh, on-demand startups or whatever they're, they're coming out and they're saying you know I want to go after the doctor's office I want to go after you know improving that customer experience I want to go after depression I want to go after right. you know using big data to help Solve right. uh, problems with uh, cancer, or you know, uh, 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 you know, vets that need new limbs. You know, using big data to create new kinds of prosthetics. You right. know, it's so many cool things going on um, that just weren't weren't possible. But I think like people weren't willing to like dive straight into the middle of those stigmas. Mm -hmm. You know, and straight into the middle of like trying to solve some of these problems. But it, for some, I think there's an awakening, and I think yeah. it's important. Great. It's funny, Dave said backstage, it's like there's so many he people here, the, the movement has started. He yeah. said, it's like, I didn't know it was going to take this long. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you can say a little bit why depression for you, like why? Um, so I've had uh, family members that have dealt with the problem for uh, over 30 years, and uh, I've just seen nothing work. You know, and uh, to me, that's just unacceptable. Um, you know, how is it that there's so many people? I mean, if you literally look at the data, it's so many people. It's a multi-billion-person problem. So that means it's not—it's not a stigma. It's not that there's no one that has this problem. It's that there's a lot of people that have this problem. It's actually, you know, it's a type of person. You know, when you're talking about a multi-billion-person problem, I mean, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. That's like Every not just personality. That's type. not just like you know one percent of the population. It's like a lot of people, and so, um, and I think that everyone that I've talked to so far. Every person I talk to, it's either they're dealing with it or their their spouse or you know somebody's somebody's dealing with the problem, and. Um, and it's just beyond me as to why there's no community and why we haven't been able to make real progress in uh, you know not just new therapeutics but you know the customer experience. Like people are alone, they they have no community, they have no one to talk to, let alone getting access to the right drugs and the right you know uh, the right meditation practice, the right cognitive behavioral therapy or whatever. You know it's it's just a it's a it's a real problem, and so um, I think that we can make progress. Um, I don't I don't think maybe I can do it all alone. You know, I think kind of a thousand flowers need to bloom here. Um, I've been investing in genomics companies, like uh, this great uh, company called Verge Genomics, uh, which is doing drug discovery for neurodegenerative diseases, and you know they've been able to in 18 months discover a new Alzheimer's drug that's 80 percent more effective than the current generics um, with a million and a half dollars. So it's it's one of those things where it's like a thousand x improvement yeah. in uh, in outcomes, and so we need we need a thousand of those. You know, we need a lot of people working on this problem, and you know uh, whether or not uh, I'm the person to go after it or not. I don't I don't know, You'll but I, I do know that you know if you want to work on this problem, like I, I want to be a resource to like help help bring people together and help help more people uh, reduce the suffering. Great, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, so our time is up. Are you heading right out or are you going to be around? I'll be around for a little bit. Okay, so Dave will be around for a little bit. If, uh, 
you have uh, want to share that vision with that he has. So thank you, Dave. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Wow. Good morning. This is a big room. <laughs> So Dave was way, one of the way bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah, I connected with Dave seven years ago, right before this yeah. started. So he's seen it uh, grow from a baby into what are we now? A teenager, maybe? <laughs> maybe we're a toddler. A toddler, yeah. We've got we've got more to go. This is really amazing. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, thank you. I, I yeah, we met when you were just barely getting it started. So it's really neat to see this. Cool. Yeah. Oh. yeah, Dave was at Facebook, I think, at the time. Yeah. And um, I had told him, I'm like trying to find anybody interested in mindfulness <laughs> <laughs> who, is, who also is in the technology world. So it was so hard to find at the time. So like searching around and they're like, there's this guy named Dave who's helped creating the Facebook platform. And <laughs> you got to get a hold of him. I'm like, really? Somebody at Facebook? <laughs> uh, back when it was like everyone was shy to talk about it. And Dave was like a good friend and connected me to other people. And it was like, no, we really need to have this conversation. Um, so I feel very fortunate that there were people like yourself and Leah and Dustin and others who were like supportive. Yeah, um, good to be back. Because I wanted to bring the tech community in. Uh, so Dave and I are going to talk about a number of uh, different things today, but we're first going to start ta talking about uh, entrepreneurship. Um, because even though he's from Montana and has deep Montana roots, uh, you also worked at Apple. You were early. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about uh, the lessons both in when something exceeds beyond its wildest dreams, which I'm guessing Facebook, <laughs> I would say, has and the challenges of that or the experience of that. And then also when it doesn't. And I know when we were talking before, you had said actually when your last company ended up getting sold, that's when you kind of started hanging out with friends again and also starting your meditation practice again. Yeah, so I was wondering if you could speak to a little bit of, about um, some of your lessons being on both sides of that experience of like uh, crazy, um, you know, things going off on a crazy way as Facebook did and then other things where you end up selling it and, and yeah. it turning out differently than you thought. Wow, that's a huge question. <laughs> <laughs> um, Facebook, you got to see the rise of Facebook. You started Path. So you've seen both things take off uh, in crazy ways <laughs> and you've also yeah. things not take off in the same crazy ways. Um, so I'd just love to get your insights about that and then also talk about um, kind of how you see the, these new companies that are emerging that are trying to use technology for a greater purpose. And I think what we've seen in the past uh, 10 years, nothing against a lot of these great companies, but they, they, were, they were not really trying to solve a social issue or a problem, they were just trying to entertain us. And I feel like there's this new wave of entrepreneurs, which I'd put you in there, which is trying to use technology to actually help reduce human suffering. And I think that's an important piece to talk about. Mm. Uh, so we'll get to that. But before I would. Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, I don't know, do you want me to start with Facebook start with or with Facebook? Sure. Start with Facebook, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the Facebook experience was like a really interesting one because you know, it, it went like way better than we ever could have imagined. Um, and going through, you know, I, I got there when we had about five million users um, and left when we had around a billion. And, you know, going from just a few, you know, 50 people in a room to thousands of people serving a billion people um, at a very rapid pace, you know, like three years um, was pretty intense. 